Uh, good morning. My name is Scott Newman. I'm the new executive director here at the Union County Chamber of Commerce. And I've got two great guests with me this morning. Uh, George Mendoza is the superintendent at the LaGrand School District. And Jeremy Davis is the CEO of uh, Grand Ronda Hospitals and Clinics. So good morning, both of you. Good morning, Thank you. George, you want to just give us a brief uh, introduction and uh, talk about yourself for a few, few minutes? Well, just uh, Scott, my name is George Mendoza. I'm the superintendent of LaGrand School District. This is my fifth year as a superintendent of LaGrand School District. Um, I have four children, wonderful wife, uh, been an educator for 26 years, and I'm excited to just talk about what's going on in our school district. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Jeremy? Thank you. Yeah, my name is Jeremy Davis, President and CEO of Brennan Hospital and Clinics. I've been here for three years. Uh, born and raised in Eastern Oregon. I have four children as well, uh, all in the school district. And uh, my wife grew up in the Boise, Idaho area, and so strong ties to, to this part of the, the country. And just grateful to be back home doing what I love. Awesome. I appreciate that. Well, you might hear an occasional twang because I am from Wisconsin and I haven't been here that long, so uh, that might come out. Uh, I also have a child in the high school. He's a sophomore right now and uh, he loves the district so far. He's been having a great time, so I appreciate uh, every, all the work you guys are doing. So, all right. Are you ready to get started? Sure. All right. So, uh, Jeremy, you want to go first. How would you define the phrase a strong community? You know, I think uh, that can be defined by in different ways and by different people. But from my perspective, I think uh, you know a strong community is resilient, uh, is really looking out for each other. And certainly, I think that uh, I've often seen it uh, said that uh, you know for a strong community there are three pillars: there are strong healthcare, strong education, and churches. Uh, certainly, in other communities, you could lay out whatever that third stool is but certainly every everything that I have seen and read uh, predominantly lists healthcare and education as a real strong pillar for a community absolutely George? wow I love his answer I yeah, think I would, answer. I would just add to that that um, you know the resilient for us it's partnership collaboration working together good citizens folks that have good morals and values uh, from an education standpoint we need Great schools, great healthcare system, great public safety as well. Um, I think when kids and when staff, but especially when kids feel safe, yeah. they do their best learning. And, and having that safety, having that structure, having that stability is important. And then thriving businesses, thriving economy also creates a strong community. I would have to agree with that. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're definitely making some, we're trying to do some new things here in town to try and help the business community. So. Uh, with healthcare and with uh, education, I think I think we're in, we're definitely in the right direction to make this a, a really great community and keep it up. Um, does strong community just relate to the wellness of our residents, or does it imply some does it imply something maybe more sweeping? No, I, you know I think from from my vantage point, certainly as a hospital, we recognize the unique role we play in terms of healthcare access uh, and certainly the, the the health and wellness of the community, but. You know, I also think about, you know, Grand Hospital is one of the largest private employers in New County. We have over 700 employees. I think we represent almost 5% of the workforce. And so certainly the economic um, support that we provide to this community is, is should not be forgotten or, or mistaken. And so certainly uh, that, I think, plays a role. You know, we want to support the small businesses, as George said. We want to be a place that when uh, the school district or a manufacturing uh, plant or, or other business wants to recruit uh, talent to the community, we know that they're gonna often ask the question, well, is there good health care? And we want that to be a resounding yes. So certainly uh, we, we play a huge role in terms of the delivery of health care, but we're so much more than that in terms of the fabric of this community. George, you wanna add to that? Well, I just think of when, when I think of well, wellness for us, it re really is kind of healthy, healthy systems, healthy culture, healthy individuals. Um, we think we have basically a culture of care in our school district. And in that culture of care, we really think about social, emotional, mental health and behavioral support programs and systems. Um, we even have a mental health element where we have a day treatment um, support system for K through five. and. Understanding our emotions, understanding how we're processing our emotions, understanding how to make safe, responsible, um, 
choices and then also how to be regulated is important for learning yeah. and thriving. And so that's important to our school district. When we also think of wellness, we think of doing joyful activities, um, be, being mindful as well, if it means exercise, if it means um, being out in nature, if it means spending time with your friends and family. So in our district, there's a lot of thinking about what can you do individually for your own wellness, and then what can we do collectively to create good systems that hopefully have people that have strong relationships, good routines, and are regulated so that they can do the best learning possible. I would agree 100%. All right, George, I'm gonna have you do the next one. Uh, what do you see uh, are the pillars of a strong, vibrant, and growing community? I think this kind of goes with the first one that the first question yeah. we threw out. But do you want to add anything? I think back to you know, great school system, great healthcare system, public safety, businesses, or, or thriving economy as well. Uh, but in the end, resilient, as Jeremy stated, just we need to be good at getting through problems and situations and coming out better and stronger because of that growth. Um, we need to be good at collaborating, we need to be good at talking to each other, at partnering where we can, applying resources together so that we can create better. Um, I usually think of like, if, our, if we're aligned in where we're trying to achieve something um, and we're working towards that, whether it's a building, whether it's a hospital, um, whether it's, you know, getting kids to become champions at wrestling, when we, Congratulations, by the way. Oh, yeah. No, when we're working together towards a common direction, usually good things happen. And those things are very important. And I don't care if it's mental health issues. If we're working together and we're getting better at applying resources and strategies and systems so that we can make mental health a strength for our community, that's, that's usually the kind of work that Jeremy and I even talk about at times so that we can make sure that our kids are healthy, our families are safe, are, are healthy, and our community is safe. So those are thoughts that role, I guess, in my mind. Excellent. You want to add anything? You know, I echo George's uh, sentiments, and I would say, you know, I think what makes a strong community or a strong pillar is taking advantage of your strengths. I think one of the things that we have is, is you look at our valley, the recreational activities that we have. So there is a lot of opportunity to, to get outdoors and to refresh and, and rejuvenate. And then I, I just think of Eastern Oregon, and the word comes to mind is grit. I think of those Oregon pioneers and they had to be self-sufficient, they had to figure out and solve their own problems. And I think that mentality has carried itself to today. And uh, I've, I've met a lot of folks in my three years here who have been attracted to La Grande and to Union County because there is a can-do attitude. There is a, a spirit of collaboration. There is a spirit of wanting to work together to solve these problems because, uh, let's face it, um, oftentimes we are not going to get the the support we need at a state or federal level. Right. Um, we can ask, we can try, and certainly uh, we're grateful for any support we do get, but most of the time, we're gonna have to solve it ourselves. And, and so that's what I've enjoyed you know, in my time here. And George and I have had numerous conversations, as he's alluded to, where we sometimes sit back and we brainstorm. How can we partner? How can we address mental and behavioral health? How can we address other uh, social needs to make this a healthy and vibrant community? And I have to add in that <coughs> since I've been here, um, the amount of outreach from the community, from the school district, from the hospital, uh, you invited me up to a breakfast. I mean, just the outreach since I've been here, uh, the people of Eastern Oregon have been fantastic. I mean, nice, friendly, um, the outdoor environment, as you talked about, and you talked about, there's just so much to do here. And I'm so happy to be here. It's Good. just, it's, uh, it's been great so far, so. Um, all right, George, um, are you ready? Sure. What role can education play? And uh, can you give us an example of how we can continue to grow and build? Yeah, well, uh, education in general, the role it has, no matter what, is to ensure that students graduate, um, to ensure that students graduate healthy and safe, um, that we have the opportunity for students to be good citizens, to have good work ethics, good job skills, good soft skills, that they can pursue any post-secondary option that they want. So if they're really interested in going to a university or a trade school or just getting into the workforce that we, we get them ready for that, um, that they're ready to contribute, that they're ready to be good citizens, that they're ready to think in a way that it's my job to give back. So we do a lot in our school district to make sure that we build service into activities that we do. One of our goals is that 
100% of our students will participate in some type of act of service each school year. We, we also do more to increase club sports and participation in activities because we believe that if we have children participating in club sports or activities, that they will pass their classes and that they will graduate. So there's a lot of things that our school district wants to do. We gotta make sure that students are good at critical thinking, problem solving, understanding, reading, writing, math, social studies, all those kinds of important uh, foundational core concepts that, that schools teach. But we want them prepared for the world. Education also needs to understand the needs of the community, the needs of the workforce, and make sure that we align programs and systems so that students can go into those jobs and contribute at a high level. Um, so we look at pathways, we look at the skills, we look at the trades, and then we make sure that we have programs that align to that. So that, to me, is what a good education system does. Can, um, um, can you just add maybe a little on how important athletics, high school athletics, can be to a community and drawing people into the community? Um, I know my, my experience uh, in Wisconsin, there was a, a suburb of Madison that was great at football, and that town attracted so many old Wisconsin football players because their kids wanted to play for that that uh, for that program. So, is there a role athletics can play in growing a community? I love see? that. Well, at the very least, it helps kids to move to have physical <laughs> wellness for <laughs> them to grow in relationships and have great experiences, to be team players, to learn how to communicate and collaborate, to work on a common goal and go in the same direction. Right. For me, just alone, uh, sports is really what gave me, you know, the opportunity to be sitting in this chair right now. If I didn't have sports, I wouldn't have gone to college. I wouldn't have be become an educator. I wouldn't have been a superintendent. Sports really gave me a lot of the things that I am today. So, yes, um, if you didn't know this, this is good for you to know, Scott. Okay. Okay, so in the, just even in the last five years, there's a thing called the Oregon Cup. Um, and it has to do with athletics and activities in the state of Oregon. And we're a 4A school district. Um, they go as high, they go 1A all the way to 6A. And in Oregon, there's 41 school districts that are 4A districts. In the last five years, we've either been the third best, second best, or first best awesome. each year as it relates to sports and activities. From our wrestling program, football program, softball program, volleyball program, basketball program, all the way to choir and band. So we have very strong athletic and act activities programs in our school district. We are continually in the top three of the state. So do I think it matters? I, I would say it matters a great deal. We invest into our kids, we invest into our programs, and for us to have a top three program in the state continually usually means that we have really great parents, we have really great athletes, and we have really strong coaches, really great coaches that put in a lot of time, put in a lot of effort, a lot of off-season skill development and relational building and relational capacity with kids right. to get the best out of them. So I would say if you come to this community and you live in this community, you'll, you'll probably experience a lot of people pouring into kids, trying to get the best out of them and usually having really strong results. Right, and I think that's very important. Um, and what role can health services play? And maybe, maybe kind of go into the athletics. Yeah, you, can you know, I, medicine. you know, to piggyback a little bit on what George said. You know, what I love about Legrand is that you know there is this fabric that's woven together that integrates sports and extracurricular activities, the arts, music. Um, I know that when I've talked to numerous providers as we're trying to recruit them, uh, they ask for these for their children, and we're able to to talk about programs that a lot of other rural communities don't have. And so it really does, uh, I think, allow our youth and our children to become more well-rounded and better prepare them for, for growth and development in, in adulthood. Uh, certainly, I think healthcare, uh, we're that underbelly, that, that foundation that's making sure that uh, these students uh, get access to the healthcare they need, that they're meeting their milestones, both cognitively and physically and emotionally and, and mentally. and. You know, we've been very successful over the last three years. We've, we've signed 45 new providers. Uh, we've, we've continued to uh, expand and grow services, trying to make that accessibility easier. Uh, we recognize that healthcare um, can still be a challenge to access uh, for many folks. Uh, you know, we were very early adopters of telemedicine, leveraging technology. 
so the beauty of that is that uh, when the pandemic hit, we were able to leverage technology and we already knew how to use it. We didn't have to scramble and figure out how, how, to, how to make it work. That's nice. And so, you know, I, I think, again, the athletics and sports and, and all that, we, we want our, our athletes to be healthy and strong and, and uh, tuned up so they can compete as, as, as they'd like to on, on the field or on the court or, or wherever it may be. But you know there are so many other activities. I think of the Elgin Opera House. I think of the music. Uh, gosh, I think the music program has, has won a lot of awards. I, I would <laughs> say just to, I would say five or six state championships in the last eleven years. Wow! Wow! Uh, we win about half of them. Oh, really? Awesome. And if we don't win, we're in second place. <laughs> so. And then, you know, George, we have a great, we have uh, great teachers. Uh, you know, George mentioned that you know the district has a goal of service. And I'll tell you, we've actually been on the receiving end of that. We've had some students who have volunteered up here to help uh, with some landscaping and this and that. And, and so it's not just words. I mean, we see it happen. I've seen it happen. And, and it's those little things that, again, make you, uh, I think, connected to a community. And I'll tell you, as an administrator, uh, it actually invigorates me and energizes me to even try even harder because I see the impact that uh, that this hospital and our staff, our nurses, our doctors are having on this community. And so it, it, it motivates you to want to keep, keep building, keep growing, keep challenging why we do what we do uh, because, you know, folks depend upon us. Right. Um, all right. How can education and healthcare kind of, kind of complement each other? Uh, do you see how can we continue to grow and work yeah. closer together? I mean, yeah. Are so there things that you can see, you know, I, I think it, it goes without saying is, is we need to have strong uh, education in the community. You know, when I'm recruiting nurses, when I'm recruiting doctors, when we're recruiting other professionals to our organization, they want to know that uh, if they have a family, that their kids are going to be taken care of. And I can only imagine on George's side that when he's recruiting professionals and teachers and educators, they want to know there's good health care. And so making sure that we're in alignment and that we're, we're heading in a positive direction is, is just huge. Um, because if we're really going to expand and grow and support this community, uh, we've got to be doing well ourselves. And then synergistically, uh, you know, I think we can accomplish more together than we can do separately. Um, so, so certainly I think there's a lot that we can do together. You know, I. I've actually mentioned numerous times to providers that um, I use uh, the Central Elementary as a prime example that um, here is a community that in the last five to 10 years has made an investment, a significant invest investment into education and right. infrastructure. And there are a lot of rural communities in this country who have not. And I came across a recent study that, that interviewed, uh, I think it was 391 physicians who were in their final year of residency. And they asked them, what size of, of community are you looking to practice in? And it was less than 1% that were targeting a community between 10 and 25,000, which is the grand. And so the fact that I'm able to talk about um, our community in a positive light, in terms of recreation, in terms of manufacturing, in terms of of law enforcement in terms of education making needed investments I think again gives us uh, a step up in terms of trying to attract these folks to our community. Why, why do you think it's that only one percent are trying to target a, a town of our side? What, what, <laughs> what, why, why is that? Why do they you want know, to go to the big I'll, city I'll, I'll and get the candid. lights? I, I don't know maybe they just don't know better. <laughs> um, I, I think um, often the providers that we have talked to they didn't know that a community like the Grand or a hospital like Grand Rapids Hospital existed. And so, you know, when you think about how large the United States is, and especially in this day of digital media, uh, we're bombarded with messages every minute. And so how does your message stand out versus somebody else's? And so it takes time, it takes uh, persistence. Um, and honestly, our best advocates are the folks that live in this community. Uh, they're already here, and uh, and then certainly we want to attract some new folks that bring new ideas and, and challenge us in ways to grow that we may not have thought uh, for ourselves. But uh, that really is the challenge. Is I think most of these providers that I've talked to did not know that a place like Union County or the Grand or Grand Hospital existed previously, 
and then once we get a chance to tell our story, they're pretty darn they're excited. Hooked. <laughs> yeah. Do you have the same issues with recruiting uh, teachers to the district or administrators? Well, we have Eastern Oregon University here, hey, that, so that does help they have a really good, uh, <laughs> I'll just say, a university with, uh, you know, a teaching college, and um, in that in that school, we have a lot of their students that usually come in and do their internships or their student yeah. teaching experiences. Kind of got the yeah. Well, there. so we have. I'm going to just say, <laughs> finding K-12 teachers isn't as hard but when you get into specialty areas um, special education at times or uh, counseling they don't have a school that's as strong for for having that so we definitely struggle sometimes to find folks um, with the proper licensure yep. to be counselors or to be special education teachers and then we have to typically do a program of study and that's usually a two-year program and folks have to come in under an emergency license or, and then we have to help them get into a program, and then they have to get there. At least you have the flexibility to, uh, you know, to do that. So that's that's been great. Yeah, I would I would just say even having Eastern Oregon University is a, a great benefit to our school district, likely to our hospital yeah. as well. I, we benefit a great deal from opportunities that they provide for our staff or our students, or vice versa. The opportunities that we provide for them to do research, to do work, and also to collaborate and partner. Um, a lot of our kids get more development opportunities because of the university. Great, and I, I think we can continue to expand on that, that relationship. Well, and I would say that uh, I think with Eastern Oregon University, it brings additional culture and sophistication to our community. And, uh, and it's Georgia opportunity. And so uh, that's both uh, from an education standpoint and extracurricular uh, standpoint. and. Certainly, with their facilities, um, it gives, you know, gosh, I think it maybe gives some of our student athletes a competitive advantage. Um, so, certainly, uh, it takes strong community partners uh, to be successful. Right. And from a business standpoint, I think um, everything that, that we've talked about this, this morning and the university, um, it, it gives us a, a workforce that's educated, that's ready to go out and work. Um, it's my job to keep them in town. A lot of them like to leave and go to the big city, but um, if we can attract uh, more business and and the pillars of doing attracting more business are exactly what we've been talking about here this morning. I mean, I, I can't tell a business to come into a grand if, if they got terrible schools and we got a bad hospital. That's that's not going to happen. We don't have those problems, so it's it is easier to do that. And I um, like I said, I haven't really been here long enough to. Uh, to attract a lot of businesses, but we're we're working on it. So right. we're we're going to get right. this community to grow. So, uh, from my perspective and the business perspective in town, um, I think we've got the basis set to uh, to really continue to grow. So that part's been great. Um, all right. So the hospital and the school district are both major employers uh, employers in the region. How does having strong health services and education institutions benefit your uh, your organization? I think we kind of touched on it a little bit here. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think what I would add to it is that, uh, you know, again, I think having strong employers, a strong hospital, strong education system, uh, we're able to support small business. You know, and again, that really, I think, is the fabric of any small community. And, uh, you know, the fact that those dollars can stay local. You know, we've done a lot of construction projects o over the years here. And I think uh, our chief financial officer shared with me that 90% uh, of our construction dollars have been spent within a 100 mile radius of Grand Island Hospital. And so again, we, we recognize that not only are we playing, I think, a vital role in Union County, but it actually is going beyond our county borders. And, and again, I think that's why uh, we enjoy our way of life. Um, it's, you really do get a chance to make a positive difference. And I think the benefit of rural is, well, I guess it's a blessing and a curse. The blessing is you quickly know whether you're making a positive impact. The curse is then you quickly know if you're not making a positive impact <laughs> yeah, that's uh, true. very quickly. And so, but again, I, I, you know, having that pulse uh, allows you, I think, to be more nimble, more, uh, more responsive uh, to, to your stakeholders and to your community and, uh, and allows you to thrive. Um, you're both parents. Uh, that's the nature of being in a rural community. How does it benefit you as a parent and a member of the community? And what has your experience been so far? And do you have any examples that you could 
Post-op. Scott, it's a really great question, and I think it's going to be more of a personal example that okay. I give you. That's and it's, it's one of those, um, I think, and I think Jeremy feels the same way. We both have children in the school district. Um, my, old, my son, my only son, just graduated from the Grand High School. Congratulations. I have a, I have a daughter that's in sixth grade. Um, I'm heavily invested in making sure that our children have great experiences. I would even say sometimes vicariously through all the students that I get to see, whether through my children or whether when I walk into classrooms and, and go to different schools, I develop a relationship with a lot of students and then I just care about their success and I want things to go well for them. And then I want to make sure that we're applying as many resources as possible to make sure that that happens, whether through club sports or activities or getting great at reading, getting, you know, getting great at math or graduating. And so. My focus has always been, I just want things better. And I'm giving as much as I can to make sure that our community is better and our school district is better. And I don't care if it's sidewalks, I don't care if it's buildings, I don't care if it's reading, math, or graduation, or winning state championships. Our goal is just to make sure that things are better in our, in our school district, therefore helping our community, helping our region. I, I would just say for, for children, and what we're looking for in children, it's just that they have great experiences, that they learn, they grow, and they thrive in our school district, and that we have a high quality education program that allows them to reach their highest potential. Those are the things that are in our mission and vision statements, and we have a lot of values and beliefs that we apply resources towards, and we also have a strategic plan in our school district, so I would encourage you, or I would encourage others to just basically Look at our strategic plan, look at our goals. We spend a lot of time and energy working towards them, applying funding towards them, and then monitoring them, and then updating our board on how we're doing on that. And then we just kind of keep monitoring, adapting, evolving, and moving forward. So there's a lot that we do, and you know, ultimately I always want children to have great relationships, to feel success, and to be ready for the world. That's a great answer. Yeah, you know, I think uh, we've heard it said it takes a village to, to raise a child. And so I think for me, having four children in the school system, and as I engage and participate in their activities and, and help them with their homework and, and so forth, it allows me to, I think, be hopefully a better community member. Because uh, I know what is important to them. I get to hear what's going on in the schools and what's what's working, what maybe what's not working, what, uh, what they love about the schools, what they don't. And, uh, you know, for me, then I can try to apply whatever I can in terms of that feedback on the health and wellness side. You know, if there's an access issue, if there's a certain specialty that maybe we don't have in the, in the community. So I can try to solve that issue because I like George, I just want to make things better. Uh, you know, I think in business, uh, I, I often say there really is no status quo. You're either growing or you're contracting. Correct. And yeah, there's moments when it's okay to pause and catch your breath, but we've got to constantly kind of lift your chin up and be looking ahead. What's that next hurdle that we want to overcome, that next little thing that we want to improve? And some of them are very substantial and big. Uh, others are very small. And, you know, and I think as we keep our children uh, at the center of what we do in this community, you know, obviously I think over time, uh, our community will, will, will benefit from that. Um, it really does uh, turn over generation to generation. Uh, so as we make the kids experience better, as we improve their education, as we improve their health and wellness and their outcomes, uh, it can't but improve and lift our community over time. I know one of the things when I was, when I was looking to move here, um, I did my research. I did, obviously, I looked at the school district. I looked at the, the hospital and you know, the city in general, the, the economic growth that was going on in the area, and everything that I, I found uh, in my research was just top notch, which ultimately attracted us here. So to move my, my whole entire family across the country, um, that was a, a big deal to make sure that we made the right move, because I do not ever want to move again, because that was not fun. So <laughs> it, was, it was definitely a challenge, but uh, like I said, um, Everything that in my research was was top notch right, on right. both. So, um, all right, we can all agree that we want and need a strong, vibrant, and growing community. Why is it important that we continue to reinvest over time? 
what will happen if we don't? Yeah, I think uh, it kind of goes without saying that, uh, as I mentioned, if you're if you're not growing, you're contracting. Correct. And I think in in this day and age, as I mentioned, with social media and you're constantly being bombarded with information, it seems like every second. Um, it's a very competitive world out there, and and I think again that's where the work that the school district is doing in preparing these students for that world. Um, is, is so important. And so I think for the hospital standpoint, you know, a lot has changed. Um, you know, we had surgeries, you know, 10 years ago that you would end up staying here for three days. Right. Now you're going home same day. So again, I think investing not only in your craft and your skill and your competency and your edu and, and your knowledge base, but I also say in terms of our hospital, we have continued to refresh and update our infrastructure, because again, we want to be an attractive place for folks to practice, receive care, and 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 and, um, and work. And so, the reinvesting to me, uh, gosh, I, I just don't know how you could do it uh, if you're not. Right. And I think ultimately it also helps you attract those those new uh, uh, physicians that that want to. Or maybe on the line, or well, maybe don't and that, you know, with and I know we've talked a lot about attracting folks, but it's also about re Retention. retaining. Yeah. Um, we do have a great way of life here. Um, certainly, there are things that need to be improved, but I think when uh, people see that you are willing to accept feedback and and assess the situation and make the necessary changes and investments, that creates loyalty, that creates uh, right. longevity. And ultimately, I think it creates um, a partnership and, and with your community that is just hard to, to ignore. It's a great answer, by the way. The retention is probably something we don't talk enough about. We always talk about attracting, yeah. and that's you. You fall in that trap. But retention is yeah. once you've got somebody here, you want to keep them yeah, here because it's very hard to. Um, all right, George. Uh, if we can all agree that we uh, need a strong, vibrant, and growing community, why is it important that we continue to reinvest over time? Do you have any examples or anything in the hopper that you want, no, to, I, you want to share with us? <laughs> I, I would definitely just say we, we can get to reinvesting in facilities okay. and in infrastructure. I think that's a, a big deal. But just you have to invest in education and education programs and education services to make sure that you're up to date and make sure that you're giving a high quality educational experience to children. Right. Back to even our strategic plan, one of the goals that we have within that is to exceed the state average at everything, but for us it's it exceed the state average at, at math results for third grade, fifth grade, eighth grade, high school, you know, achievement results for, for math, for reading, um, for graduation, for ninth grade on track. Um, and it takes money, it takes resources, it right. takes professional development, it takes good curriculum, it takes people that know how to engage children and get the best out of them so that they can exceed state standards. That's an investment and a continual reinvestment. That's something that happens in our school district. That's the same thing for our sports program. For us to go and, and compete with the best, we have to drive far. We have to, <laughs> we, have, we have some kids sometimes that are gone 20 days to 25 days out of the school year because of the distance that we have to travel to compete against some of the top programs in the state. It's a unique situation. It takes money, <laughs> it takes time, it takes energy. It's a continual investment and reinvestment for our facilities, you know, we in 2014 we passed the bond, 32 million. I believe we got four million dollar premium, almost 36 million dollars to be able to build a new central, to put in a, a beautiful new gymnasium at the high school, remodel our, our uh, auditorium, put in the CTE um, facility, update Willow, uh, not update Willow, update um, Island City, and put in, I, I believe, six classrooms. Put in a a cafeteria, update two classrooms in Greenwood, put in two new kinder classrooms. We were able to do so many things. And then from there, we were able to get about $9 million more. We increased our student enrollment. We were able to put in a new track, a new tennis court, work with EOU, help them to put in their field turf. Now we put in field turf as well for our softball and baseball fields. We've been able to do so much more um, because of that investment and, and now, with this reinvestment or investment of the bond, that 2014 bond, we've been able to refinance that bond from a 
from a 4.69 interest rate, actually it's 4.75, I believe, interest rate to a 1.69 interest rate. Wow, wow that's huge. And that was <laughs> able to uh, to reduce $2.3 million off, off the debt, but then it was also able to reduce, um, really going from a $1.93 um, bond levy rate to a $1.68, or actually $1.65 bond levy rate, which is a 28 cents dollar difference. Now we're asking for that 28 cents and we're asking folks to forego a decrease in those taxes so that we can get 4.845 million. And then we have an awesome grant, which is a facilities grant that we were given by the state okay. to get 8.845 million to be able to do an annex, a multi-use athletic academic center, replace the annex and maintenance, which are 98 years old. The, so Probably the, do, I would the, an, the annex is 98 years old. Yep. And then the maintenance building is 111 years old. Okay. And we need to reinvest in our facilities. Yes. We need to make sure that we have state-of-the-art, better facilities for our students and our staff so that their work conditions are right and so their learning conditions are better. Right. Um, and I would just say there's, there's something in that what, what Jeremy had shared. Like, I don't, I don't always feel like we have a choice except to evolve, grow, and improve. When you have 100-year-old facilities, and we have five facilities in our district that are over, over 75 years old. So we need to continue to, to reinvest, to fix problems, to apply resources, to make sure that those environments are suitable for students and staff. And I don't get to just pause and say, we're gonna let that 111-year-old building become 125-year-old building that really isn't getting used anymore and isn't really safe. Right. When, when we have when we have buildings that after 100 years old, their foundation is deteriorating, their cement, their mortar, their bricks are deteriorating, the structural integrity is going away, 100 year old pipes, 100 year old wires, 100 year old roof, all of these things are, are I'll just say not as strong as they once were when they were new. Right. And I'm very thankful that we've used them and that we've got to use them for over 100 years. I think that that's great. But it also means that we do need to reinvest. And is it going to be remodel, replace, or repair? Right. And we had a committee that's worked on it, and it's basically we need to replace these facilities. And we're doing it in a way where we're really just asking folks to forego that decrease, maintain the existing tax rate, maintain the existing tax terms of, of a bond that passed, having just 13 years left, everything the same, but allow us to do some really cool things for our community, for our students, and for our, our school district. It sounds like it sounds like a great way to to actually make that investment. So I know you wouldn't want to be working in a hundred year old no. hospital, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of get where he's coming from here. Yeah. But uh, so I think it, I think it's great what the, what the district what the plan is to do that. So um, anything else on uh, on reinvestment from that you can think of? Uh, no. Uh, again, I would say you know we're actually in the same boat. You know we're we're looking to. Uh, do a major facility project uh, of our own um, and uh, you know we want to modernize our operating rooms our, our current ORs are basically been in place for 30 years uh, they've served us well but again um, when you think about the pandemic and we are we are starting to see some population shift across the United States I think with the pandemic a lot of folks are now targeting rural communities they want to get back to a simpler way of life and uh, we are anticipating growth and we have experienced uh, exponential growth here at the hospital over the last several years and so really to meet that demand meet new code compliance and so forth we're also making uh, necessary investments and, and again this is really not because we want to do a complex project i mean these <laughs> these add gray hairs uh, <laughs> um, i don't for, for, for I can tell you all, that. all the parties involved but again it's looking towards that future uh, not only addressing uh, a, an issue right in front of us, but again, investing in our future to ensure that, again, our providers, our staff, and our community have the best uh, resources available, um, again, for that healthy way of life that, that, that we want here. So, so absolutely, and I think, you know, this pandemic, uh, you know, I hate to even talk about it because we kind of want to just <laughs> <laughs> shift. We want to go to the next Go to the next topic, <laughs> but I think it really has... When you do have a moment to stop and pause and kind of assess, 
um, you know, as a leader, I think now is actually that time to, to take advantage of uh, the situation and, and really double down in shoring up vulnerabilities within our infrastructure and in, in our education and in terms of our, our knowledge base. And again, George and I are obviously talking a little bit about physical buildings, but uh, you know, we also need to invest al also in training and, right. and making the job easier for them if we can. And uh, those are all, I think, things that will allow us to not only attract and retain uh, the type of folks that uh, love to call them the grand home. I think it's great. Can I, I'll just make this one last comment, sure. just to keep it really clear and succinct for me. If, if we really do want a better future, if we really do want a better economy, um, if we really do want a better world, we have to invest in education and we have to invest in, in healthcare. Yeah, I think they're the two they're the two biggest parts of, of a community that that uh, that everybody needs so uh, business and everything will will kind of come after those after the base is set I think um, then, then the business community reacts to it after that so all right we all want good things for our families and our community still community members may not always feel like they can contribute in a way that makes a difference what would you say are the best way for community members to contribute for the greater good should they get involved in how can people get involved to make the community better? Great stuff. Um, service, community service. Anytime folks want to contribute and be a part of any community service agency that looks to uh, support many different causes, I think that that's usually an, an act of love and an act of service that usually creates better for any community. Um, if they want to coach youth sports, <laughs> we always need more people that want to coach youth sports. We don't have enough referees. Most people nowadays don't want to be referees. If they want to be involved and become <laughs> referees, we need that. If they want to be mentors or tutors or volunteers that work at schools, back to our, our school rules are starting to open up now, so we're ready for, for people that want to help kids in small groups to get better at reading, right. math, or just even doing more activities. Um, I would just say, just being positive and optimistic is also something that's a really big contribution to society. Forgiving, forgiving, tolerant, open-minded, um, understanding that there are good humans that, that work also in systems or government systems or organizations that are trustworthy, right. that do look at data, that do look at research, that work with experts, that follow rules and laws, and they have to keep organizations moving forward and that that's a basis for a lot of decisions that also take place. Um, I sometimes, I mean, I've, I've told this to my wife a few times, so I'm just gonna say it this way. There are times that I think I start to know a lot. There are times that I think that I, you know, I'm getting comfortable at COVID this and close contact that and quarantine this and isolation that and how come we don't do these things? You know, I question, uh, I, I don't always like every single rule. I don't agree with everything either. And I, I get into that spot of like, yeah, I don't, you know, thinking that I know a lot. And then I get into a meeting with an epidemiologist, or then I get into a meeting with a doctor, or then I get into the meeting with Jeremy or, or Dr. Zach or, or Carrie Brajati. And then I get another perspective, and then I learn, I'll just say, details at a higher scope we're at a more expert level. And then I understand that, I guess I don't know as much as I thought, <laughs> or there's a lot of room for growth here in, in my <laughs> thinking, and I need to think more globally or think more big picture right. and understand why we have some of these rules right. and understand why we have some of these requirements. And I think that would be good for how we can contribute as well, like just moving into an abundant mentality and open-mindedness and then also just being a part of the team again or being part of the, the partnership to make us better in the end um, we just got to we just got to move forward right. like we can't stay back five year stuff or ten year stuff or two year stuff we can only go forward right. and going forward is investing in our kids or investing in our community and investing in our future that's usually gonna be the best way for us to absolutely to make things better so I'll stop yeah. thanks no <laughs> that was great no great answer um, how can community members contribute more? Yeah, in, so in your vision? I, I think like George said, you know, we also are starting to open up in terms of uh, accepting volunteers. 
Uh, we've continued to allow uh, various students come and do some shadow experiences that, that I think often uh, folks don't realize that we do that for those that want to pursue maybe a health profession uh, down the road. Um, yeah, you know, as I said earlier, it takes a village to raise, raise a child. And it really is that fabric of volunteers, of, of parents, and uh, even high school students who have some time on their hands uh, to, to volunteer and give back. Um, they are laying a foundation, they're planting a seed that might give a child um, that inspiration, that vision to achieve something that they, they didn't have them for themselves. And, um, you know, and I think, you know, uh, with, with the pandemic, I think, uh, and George kind of alluded to this, um, I think we're at a point in, in our community, in our society, where, um, what's the word I want to use? There is some tension, there is some conflict. And, you know, we're, we're tired and, and many of us maybe even feel a little beaten up because uh, it's been tough and, and there's been a lot of things that we did not have the local control, we didn't have the local decision making that maybe we wanted. But we did the best we could with the data and the information we have and, you know, and, and we, we need to learn from that. And I think now that we're, with the Omicron uh, appears to be behind us and things are starting to open up and, with the, uh, the emergency declaration uh, going away, I, I hope it's a time that we kind of take stock in what we've been through and start to look forward and what do we want our community to be and what do we want it to look like. And, and certainly I think with strong education systems, strong healthcare, and a community that is uh, committed to, um, to, to moving forward and, and really growing and, and, and adapting from the experience that we had, I think is gonna be huge, because there are people who are looking for communities just like Union County, and, and we wanna capitalize on that. So I think this is a place that uh, people can grow. So, all right, we're coming down to the wire. Um, so I know you both value healthy communities and are both working hard to achieve that every day. Uh, the goal at the chamber is the same thing. We wanna attract people, get them into town, keep them in town once they're here. So I appreciate everything that uh, both of you have done for the community. Do you have any final thoughts um, on maybe uh, you want to leave with the community before we wrap up today? Um, I think I've shared so many things. <laughs> I would just say again, uh, where we can focus on kids and put a lot of energy into the needs of children and make that a priority, I would ask for folks to, to, to do that. Um, I do think that we've gone through a lot of trauma, yeah. and I, I do feel that um, you know folks um, probably do have um, some anger or resentment at times, and I think in in the end, I, my hope is that folks just forgive as well or communicate. I'm I'm always open to visiting with anybody about what we've done and why we had to do it, and um, really the compelling reasons that that we were required to do different things, but that in the end, um, all we can do is go forward now. And um, we've got building issues that we got to address. <laughs> we've got graduation things that we want to accomplish. We've got many things that, that we need to keep doing for the success of our children, the success of our community. And that's really, to me, the, the driver of the future. Um, and if folks want to spend time visiting with me about our bond, I'm happy to visit with anyone as it relates to that. Or if folks want to visit with me about our school district and our operations, I'm, I'm happy to visit with anybody on that as well. And I think communication between the community and all levels is going to be very important, especially if, you know, God forbid, something happens like the pandemic again. Um, the communication and just getting out what's really going on uh, at every level so, do you have any final thoughts? You know, I, I'm an optimist by heart. I, I, I'm a half glass half full guy, not uh, half empty. And I'd say, you know, the mission doesn't stop. I think uh, from our vantage point from the hospital, we have kept a, an eye on our mission of, in terms of health care services here in Union County. And yeah, there are times when our chin had to look down uh, closer to our feet and, and address something right front and center. But I really am sensing a, a, a bit of optimism. Maybe it's you know the warmer weather a little bit, 
daylight savings coming, <laughs> you know, this Sunday, and and uh, the sun's out a little bit more. But I really think that uh, there is a sense of optimism that uh, I, I'm hoping that the worst is, is behind us and that we really do look forward and lift our chin up and, and look ahead. And we have some exciting things that I think when you think about Grandma Hospital and some of the investments that we've made in the community in terms of growth and services and provider specialties, what the school district has done, uh, we've learned a lot over these last two years. And uh, that that experience will only but help us be stronger uh, as we make uh, additional investments and decisions going forward. So yeah, I think again, the mission doesn't stop and hasn't stopped. Um, I think for me, uh, it has even uh, energized me even more uh, at the, at maybe the detriment of my own family at times uh, in terms of time spent right. uh, to make sure that doing everything we can to make sure that, that this hospital can be counted upon uh, when folks need us most. All right, well, I want to thank both of you. Jeremy Davis, CEO of Grand Ronde Hospitals, George Mendoza, the superintendent over at the La Grande School District, and I'm, my name is Scott Newman. I'm the Chamber of Commerce Director, so I appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for the candid talk, and uh, I hope to meet with you both soon. Thank you That's very good. much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>